Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here to answer a couple of questions. One that I get asked so many times in the comments and I just don't answer it because <laughs> I'd be answering it a thousand times. I know I have answered it in the past, but I'm going to answer it again. And it is about the little piece of fabric that you guys see under the foot on my sewing machine. So I'm gonna save that one for last. <laughs> The other one is I have been getting asked a lot of questions about what's the deal with the free ebooks because I post free ebooks and I put that on social media and uh, to promote those free ebooks. Once upon a time, many years ago, bloggers were sharing um, links to the ebooks that they would find. Uh, they're from Amazon. Amazon sometimes has uh, ebooks that are free for a short time. I don't get to know what length of period they're free. At least I don't think I do. And I don't know when it started being free or when they're going to stop being free. But I was involved in a group with bloggers and some would say, I do the ebooks every day. If anybody would like my list, I'll send it to you and then you can link back to me. So it was just a way for bloggers to help each other out. So I uh, started doing that. I would get the links from those particular bloggers and I would uh, I would get the list of books from those bloggers and then I would link back to them. And then I found that a lot of them weren't as consistent. I, I have hair. My hair is wild and weird and like straw lately. I don't know. <laughs> Probably just dry. The dryness of winter. So I thought I'm going to do my my own list and I don't know if there's a magical way to find what ebooks are free. I just go to Amazon and I look for free ebooks. And I do this every morning and I have been doing it for I don't know, maybe like 15 years and when I say daily, for the most part it's daily. The only times I miss is if I happen to be traveling, you know, stuff like that and I don't have a computer handy. I wake up, I have my coffee, and I come and sit at my computer and I do my ebook list. And that's just how I wake up. And I absolutely love doing it. It's fun. I get to hunt down the books, I get to do the thumbnail with the little books, images, and stuff like that. Okay, so it's through Amazon, and I am affiliated with Amazon, but the ebooks are free. So whoever clicks to buy the ebooks, I get zero because I don't care what percent, 5% of zero is zero, so I get nothing. But what I do get, which is just a little bonus, and it's, it's tiny, is I get the cookies. So if somebody clicks on one of my links on my blog, it sends them to Amazon, and there's a cookie saying, okay, Darlene Michaud got this particular person to Amazon, and for the next 30 days, whatever that person buys on Amazon, I get a commission. And the commission is all over the place on Amazon. So it can be 1% of something. It could be, I think, maybe 5% of something. So that's just a little plus. It's not why I do it, because I'm lucky if I make 20 bucks a month on that. You know, it's just it's just not a big deal, because I only promote the free eBooks on Amazon. There are times that I'll, you know, promote something else. But I'm also affiliated with Walmart. So if I promote something, I usually promote it on Walmart. I'm just a Walmart kind of girl. But anyway, so back to the ebooks. So I um, put that on my blog and then I promote on social. That gets people to click on my blog. When they come to my blog, they get to see uh, my videos, what I have on eBay, they get to see some of Derek's videos, his bass covers and his guitar covers. So I use my blog, which is like a dying thing now, but I use mine as the hub of all the things that I do. You'll see links for my eBay store, things like that. And again, I've been blogging since the year 2000, and I think I just always will. So it's nice to have the cookies. When somebody clicks on the link, it brings them to Amazon and you can make a commission on other things they buy, even if they don't even grab one of the free eBooks. 
The only thing that cuts that off before 30 days is if that person happens to clear their cookies or if they click on somebody else's link, then it becomes that person is going to get whatever, you know, a commission of whatever they buy. And there are people who make mega bucks, mega bucks, just doing affiliate marketing like that. Now you have to disclose that it's a, an affiliate link. I don't disclose it on Facebook because I take people to my blog and on my blog there's a disclosure thing. And if you click on that, it brings you to a disclosure, which I'm sure I copied word for word what Amazon said I had to say. <laughs> and, and that's how it works. So that's why I do the free ebooks. But the main reason is that it's what I do when I drink my cup of coffee. It just feels creative to me, and I feel like people really do like it. Oh, yeah, so I did that for years on my blog, but then when I started Patreon, I don't know, six years ago, something like that, maybe longer, I thought I'll have that be a perk. So now it's only my patrons and my YouTube members, which is not a subscriber, it's a different thing, they get my ebooks every day. That's right, that was an important thing to say, right? But since they get it, and I can't promote to the masses anymore, because I like eyeballs on my blog, I every now and then dabble with doing some other kind of ebooks, and lately I have been doing 20 free ebooks, like on Wednesdays and Sundays, and that's for anyone. And I did one today, which is going to lead me to the next question. I did one today, all cozy mysteries. There's a ton of cozy mysteries on Amazon in book form, and many of them are often free. So I thought I would try a list of cozy ebooks, and they did pretty well. I have a counter on my blog, so I know you know how many people came to my blog to check out those books. I also do like crafting, I do recipe collections and crochet, different things like that, mysteries, uh, regular mysteries, thrillers, that kind of stuff. Uh, what else have I done? Self-help. Uh, um, I haven't done romance yet, but maybe I will at some point. I'd be curious to see uh, classics. Did I say that? So like every Wednesday and Sunday, I do that, and that's like just a bonus. I enjoy doing that so much. I love bringing the free ebooks to uh, my readers or my subscribers or my uh, followers on Facebook, whatever. And today I did one. So today is January 17, uh, 2024. Okay, I have it on my blog. Go to darlenemichaud.com if you're watching this on the night that I upload it. And it should be the top one. If not, just scroll down a few. It'll be there. If you're watching this in the future, don't even bother because those books won't be free anymore. Um, and some of them might not be free right now. So what it is is when you click on the link, it'll take you to the ebook. And then you have to look and see the price for Kindle has to be 0.00. If it's 0.00 and you click buy now, you will pay zero. But sometimes the price goes up. And... I don't encourage you to buy it if it's paid, uh, you know, has a price tag on it now because it'll be free later or you just wait around and see what freebies I come up with for the next day. So I mentioned Cozy Mysteries and I did those today. Go to my blog and you'll see uh, there's 20 Cozy Mysteries. Uh, that's the ones that I do for the public twice a week, sometimes three times a week if I, if I feel like I really want to do it. Cozy Mysteries are mysteries that are just kind of light-hearted. Think of things like Murder, She Wrote, the Agatha Christie stuff, um, Columbo. You know, they're like a whodunit, only Columbo we knew whodunit. <laughs> we just wanted to watch Columbo figure it out. But it's just those light-hearted kind of mysteries. And the ones that I promote, are uh, they have a lot of these types of cozy mysteries on Amazon, the paranormal ones. I, I don't promote those a whole lot. I don't know. I've never read one of these books. Um, culinary and crafty. So a lot of them come with bonuses like recipes, like the culinary ones will um, have recipes in the storyline somewhere. I don't know if it's at the back of the book or whatever. And there's some that are quilt themed. 
I had one today. Let me look. Let me look and see what it is. Mystery of the Teacup Quilt. And let me click. That was this morning, and it's still free. So sometimes they'll have a pattern for a quilt block or something like that. I just have fun with all of this. So the answer is yes, I am affiliated with Amazon, and the answer is no, I do not collect anything from the the actual free ebooks. But I can through the cookies if somebody buys something um, after they look at my book list or they click on one of the links that takes them to Amazon, then uh, I can get a commission on that. And like I said, it's, you know, I'm lucky if it's 20 bucks a month. That doesn't even pay one of my bills, not even my water bill, which is usually like 30 a month or more. Um, but, you know, if I'm going to uh, be right there on the Amazon page, all I have to do as an affiliate is like click text and it gives me that that affiliate link and I'm going to use it. Now, what is the last thing I wanted to talk about? Oh yeah, the little piece of fabric under the foot of my sewing machine. When I first saw that, the very first time, I was like, I wonder why that person has that there. So I looked up on Google, what's that little piece of fabric under the foot of the sewing machine? I got my answer. So I was like, I'm just going to tell them why don't you just Google it? But for the hell of it, I tried Googling a bunch of different things and nothing was coming up about that little tag. I call it a tag. So I'm glad I didn't give you shit for not just Googling it. <laughs> Maybe some did Google it and it didn't answer their question. But yeah, so it, that's um, what it is. It's a tag or a, um, a feeder or ender. And uh, there's different names for it, but... I just call it a tag because it looks like a tag hanging there. Here's the wonders of that. If you have an old machine like me, it seems like new machines do, uh, have a feature to not let the thread get pulled out of your needle when you're sewing. But for me, and it always drove me crazy, if I you know, stop and I pull my thread and cut my thread, even if I would cut the thread fairly long, when I start sewing again, that first stitch will suck that fucking thread out of my needle. <laughs> I hate that. So when I saw the person sewing with the tag, I thought, how cool that is. She never has to cut her thread. And when you're doing quilt blocks and stuff, you know, you're chain piecing, you're sending things through, and you want to be quick. The last thing I want to do is, you know, be pulling my thread, clipping, and then starting again, having all that thread to cut and... So I started doing it using the little leader, and um, I didn't like it. I just felt that it was tedious, but I quickly went back to, to using it, and I use it religiously now. So when you start sewing, your needle is already threaded, and it's already in that piece of fabric. You don't have to worry about the thread being magically sucked out of your needle. And the next thing is, that the little piece of fabric, I usually make it at least two layers, sometimes four, because it holds your foot up a little bit. So when you're passing your next two pieces through, you don't have to be like fighting or lifting up the foot or, you know, fighting for it to not be, um, you know, caught under the foot and flipping. It just goes right through. The other thing is it saves on your thread because, again, you don't have to pull and snip. I see the new machines, though, a lot of people just snipping right next to that foot and the needle. And then when they start, there must be something holding that or preventing this, the thread from being sucked through. But those of you who have older machines, you know what I'm talking about. You always have to be holding those threads if you don't want them to disappear. Make sure that the needle, uh, the needle is up and stuff like that. So with this, you don't have to make sure that the needle stops on up. Your foot is raised a little bit. You just send your next pieces of fabric through. The only time I can't use it is like if I'm altering clothes. If you have to start in the middle of something, you know what I mean? But if you're starting at the ed on the edge of something, just use a tag. And the other thing that people love to tell me, and it's like, wow. Is they're like, oh, just put two your two-inch squares together because a lot of people will do that when they're 
done sewing and they need a feeder, they'll take two pieces of fabric and push it through and then just put that in a basket for later. So like say they have two inch squares or two and a half inch squares. They'll say, oh, I'm going to finish by sewing that. I don't want to fucking be working when I'm done whatever little square I'm doing. I don't want to be thinking ahead. I want to just be on my scrappy little feeder and just run across that as crooked as I want to be. <laughs> just do that. I don't want to have to be concerned that, oh, I got to snip that piece off and keep it. That's just not up my alley because I'm just buzzing along and I don't want to have to be like stopping to put two pieces of fabric together to say I'm going to end with this and no so I just don't I don't like to do that I like my my little tags that I make and um and I'll keep them for quite a while until there's so much thread on them that they're a little too thick so I'll just it's just scrap scrap fabric so no I don't like the idea of um you know building two patches and using that as my tag because that becomes a job all of a sudden my job is done when I put the piece that I'm working on through and then I want my tag. <laughs> so I just wanted to answer a few of those questions and I, you know, I do get a lot of questions. Um, I can't think of anything else right now, but I do like to answer questions now and then. Um, do try a tag if you sew a lot. I think you'll, you'll like it. And then I just leave it. My tag, when I'm done sewing, the tag that I used, it just stays there, right there at my machine. And, uh, uh, yeah, all right. Now I have something I can send people back to when they ask. I will put this video link in the comment section. If they ask, I will say, here, go find out, right? Smart. I'm a smart cookie. <laughs> all right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Bye.